now you're on. Thank you, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is the Budget Committee, January 25th, 2022. Because we are still virtual, we are going to do what we ordinarily do, which is have the agenda read out loud. We do have a couple of voting items. So we will take a 10 minute break to allow for additional public comment. And then after the 10 minute break, we will come back to handle all the matters. Can I safely assume from my colleagues that we're not following a rule 30 motion to spend the rules to stay past 10 o'clock on this? Yeah, everybody, agree? everybody agrees. Okay, good, just making sure. <laughs> totally agree. All right, Mr. Shy, will you please call roll? Roll call. Councilmember Jeruso. Here. Councilmember Moreno. Present. Councilmember Morrell. Councilmember Green. Present. Councilmember Thomas. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Shy. Um, like I said, what we'll do, uh, Mr. Shy, if you don't mind, is read the agenda in its entirety after you've completed reading. We'll stand at ease for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll resume the agenda. I'll now read the agenda for the Budget Audit Board Review Committee meeting scheduled for Tuesday, January 25th, 2022 at 1 p.m. And the agenda is as follows. Item number one, roll call. Item number two, approval of the minutes from the December 9th, 2021 joint meeting of the Board of Review for Orleans Parish and the Budget Audit Board of Review Committee. Item number three, budget reports from CAO slash finance. Item A, the personnel spending forecast. Item B, the revenue collections report. And item C, operating expenses, available balances by department. Item number four, it's a motion. It's amendments to the, to the classified pay plan adopted by the Civil Service Commission on December 13th, 2021. Item A, fire department for a 911 liaison officer and supervisor. Item number five, motion, amendments to the classified pay plan adopted by the Civil Service Commission on December 13th, 2021. Item A, police department, special rate of pay for police officers, senior, corporal, sergeant, and lieutenant police officers. Item six, ordinance calendar number 33579, introduced on December 16th, 2021, by Council Member Moreno by request, in ordinance to amend and reordain ordinance number 28549 MCS, entitled an ordinance providing a capital budget for the year 2021, in accordance with the provisions of sections 3 117 and 4 206 1F of the Home Rule Charter for the City of New Orleans and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. The description is a rollover of capital ordinance to roll over the 2021 capital budget, except for the appropriation listings, which includes FEMA, federal aid, miscellaneous capital funds, insurance, and bonds. The appropriation total, 3,651,452. Item number seven, continuation of discussion regarding criminal justice budget expenditures by the City of New Orleans. Item number eight is an executive session pursuant to Louisiana revised statute 42 colon 16 and 42 colon 17 a two, the budget audit board of review committee of the council of the city of New Orleans may convene in executive session during its January 25th, 2022 meeting for the purpose of discussing the following litigation. LaShawn Jones et al versus Marlon Guzman et al. Civil action number 12-859 section I division one United States District Court for the Eastern District of Louisiana, Judge Lance M. Afric, Magistrate Judge North. And in the matter of the Edward Wisner donation, case numbers 2012-11469 and 2013-00107, Civil District Court for the Parish of Orleans. And item number three, 1031 Canal LLC versus Kristen Gislison Palmer et al. Case number 2021-05667, Division F, Section 14, Civil District Court for the Parish of Orleans. Item number nine, adjournment. That, that uh, completes the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Shy. It looks like Council Member Thomas has joined us. I see him on the screen. And I think Council Member Morrell here as well. 
Uh, as I said at the beginning, because we do have voting items and in light of guidance, we are going to take a 10 minute break to receive public comment. It is now 1.07. We will come back at 1.17. Thank you very much. All participants are now in listen-only mode.
All right, members, we'll come out in one minute. Council, see, I'm getting flags. I got one plaque here. I'm in the, the Lawless Olympian Hall of Fame. Now I got a, a, a flag. Man, uh, yeah, it's coming together, man. Well, well, yeah, well, make sure you get some more stuff in there. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, it's just wall. All yeah. right. Um, Mr. Shy, will you uh, please call us back in and make sure we've reestablished the quorum? <clears throat> so, Council Member Jeruso. Here. Council Member Moreno. Council Member Morrell. Here. Council Member Green. Here. Council Member Thomas. Here. Sorry. We have a one. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, the first voting item is approval of the minutes from the December 9th meeting of the board of review for the parish of orleans and the budget committee may I have a motion to approve the minutes please moved, moved by council member moreno uh mr shy please note that council member moreno is here may I have a second second green second second by by council member green no. all in favor aye aye, aye. Two, three council member morale yay all right, so we know we have four yeas um, on that. Members, um, one of the things I wanted to do was also move to the beginning of the agenda, the budget reports. You'll see there's three different ones, and we got those <laughs> yesterday. Uh, personnel spending, revenue collections, operating expenses. And then for our meeting in February, I've also asked for an employee FTE report, given the conversation we had last night about JJIC and the number of employees that they're budgeted for and the numbers that they have. I thought it'd be a useful exercise to know where all the departments stand with that. So usually um, what happens is Mr. Um, McElroy gives the presentations on these three. Um, Randall, are you here? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chair, right here. There you go. I appreciate it. Paul, would you mind pulling up the PowerPoint, please, that has these slides in them so Randall can walk through them? Thank you very much. And Randall, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, first off, welcome to the new members. Um, it's uh, it's going to be great. So uh, we've got, uh, we can get right down to business here. Uh, in our, uh, let's see, right, uh, one more slide, please. Oh, okay, one more. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> I knew it was in there. Um, so when we were comparing our, uh, this is through uh, January through November uh, of 2020 uh, compared with 2021. Um, you know, it, it uh, broadly looks like this. Uh, I want to point out, uh, we, uh, for December, there are, you know, a number of accruals and other things that happen. Um, you know, otherwise we, uh, we could have done that, but at the end of the year, there's a little bit of extra uh, work that has to go into it. Uh, but January through November will get us, uh, you know, keep track from uh, our last meeting. Uh, so as we see here, we are mostly uh, still feeling the effects of the pandemic. Um, but uh, you know, some uh, things with the economy are starting to come back. Um, I'll point out uh, very briefly the uh, increase in other taxes, primarily driven by sales tax. Uh, this shows some uh, pretty encouraging growth. Uh, still not quite back to normal, but uh, as you can tell from last year, this is a, a great improvement in our position. 
Um, I should point out uh, last year uh, through November, we were only at 60% of our uh, budgeted amount uh, because that budget was made uh, before COVID. Uh, for 2021, of course, the budget there was made uh, already in the middle of the pandemic. So we're much closer to the target there. Um, it's, a, it's a much lower target, uh, but we are closer to it. And uh, you know, this is the uh, basically the slow, gradual recovery that we expected. Um, I don't anticipate that we will be back to normal in uh, revenue terms and specifically in recurring revenue terms uh, for a couple more years. But uh, you know, we're uh, doing as well as we can, I suppose, right now. Uh, licenses and permits, there is some uh, decrease in that. Uh, some of this revenue has just been slower to recover. Um, this includes things like in uh, Section 214, this includes um, Airbnb taxes, uh, taxi tour guide licenses includes uh, Uber and Lyft rides. Those kinds of things have just simply not recovered uh, and probably you know, will not recover entirely uh, for a couple more years. But uh, it's not... Um, you know, when, once we when we have the sales tax, you know, we, we can see some of the recovery coming in now uh, and we'll wait for the rest of the items to recover. Could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, we have uh, the, the major thing I want to point out here is uh, service charges and miscellaneous categories, uh, section four and section six. In 2020, we're very large because we had uh, one-time payments from Harris, and we also had the CARES Act payments. Those were one-time revenues, uh, which of course do not uh, show up again in 2021. Uh, 2021 uh, is is a lot more uh, normal, uh, you know, a lot more um, in keeping with uh, the previous year trends um, before the pandemic. Um, otherwise, most of these items are fairly. Um, you know, sort of routine. Uh, in uh, line 3.3, three, the Medicaid UPL payment, that one is coming in. Uh, it is not showing up there yet, but um, that should have been received by now. Uh, and, you know, will will certainly come in by the end of 2021 when we do the next report that uh, that should have it in there. Those payments are not on a fixed schedule, so uh, it can look worse than it is. The, the money does come in. Uh, otherwise, most of this is uh, fairly routine here. Uh, if we look at the very bottom, uh, we see we were 89% uh, of our anticipated budget at this uh, time last year uh, versus 86% here. That is, uh, of course, sharply uh, supported by the uh, one-time payments. The actual, if you're removing those one-time payments, you would see a much lower number. So now uh, in this year, uh, even though the number is much lower, we've been able to you know, calibrate our expectations better, uh, already being in the middle of the pandemic. Um, but of course, I should point out the the picture is still, you know we are still uh, seeing less revenue. We expect to see less revenue. We will, uh, and this should continue for, you know, a couple more, you know, in the near future, a couple more years. Mr. McElroy, may I ask two questions? Are there Please. any early indications of what December looks like because of the holidays and shopping? Uh, right. People being home, maybe being a, even a little bit better than than the trending upward numbers on sales tax? Sure, I actually, uh, I'm fairly encouraged with what I'm seeing right now, our early returns on that. Uh, of course, we will have everything um, should be uh, in order, uh, ready to present next session, but uh, the early returns on this look pretty good. Uh, we have, uh, you know, because these are reported on an accrual basis, uh, December is always a big month anyway, just because it comes in as a double month. And, um, but the, the first part of it looks pretty strong. Uh, November was a pretty strong month uh, by itself last year. Uh, that was a 23 million. Uh, and it's about like that uh, on the early part. Uh, what I've seen early for uh, December, mm -hmm. let's be glad in another. Uh, uh, actually, so big, green is right across from that. Council member, your mic. There you go. Thank you. Sorry, okay. Mr. McElroy. No, no problem. Um, anyway, we have. Um, it, we, we may very, very slightly uh, overshoot the, uh, the forecast just on sales tax. So, you know, we are going to undershoot slightly on other things that will probably come out on the wash, but uh, it does look pretty good. Uh, the, uh, the <laughs> Unfortunately, we, of course, now have a new uh, coronavirus wave with the uh, Omicron wave. So that will mainly show up in January. It may show up a little in December. Um, 
but uh, you know we'll have to wait and see uh, to how bad that is for January. But overall, it looks um, December it by itself uh, should uh, should have been uh, a pretty decent month in revenue terms. Thank and you. I'm sorry, Mr. Chu, you had a second question. Yeah, I, I'm going to hold my second question until later. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Do any other council members have any questions about uh, the revenue? All right, Mr. McElroy, we move on to the next slide, please. Excellent. Oh, sorry, Councilmember Thomas. Uh, first of all, thank you, Mr. McElroy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, the, so on, on the contributions and other, that's where the one-time payment is represented. I see in 2020, $66,400,000. Yes, we, we booked our um, CARES Act payments under uh, that section. Okay, all right. I just wanted clarification. Thank you. Right, unusually large for that month. So, you know, nice to see when we really needed the money. Uh, but as you can see, that's a percentage terms that was vastly over because, you know, that was a, an unexpected one-time payment at the time the budget was made. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Council member. All right, Mr. McElroy, to the collections report, please, or personal, um, whatever's next, it doesn't matter. <laughs> sure. Whatever whatever it is, I'll be ready. Um, right. I, next, you. we have the uh, personnel spending. Okay. So um, personnel spending, there are really only kind of two major things to point out here. The first is the uh, fire department. Uh, that number is large, but uh, uh, some of this is... Uh, will be taken care of when we um, transfer over. This was to be funded by, grant, right, when we had our uh, ARP money come in, uh, that was assigned into the grants category. And then a lot of the expenses for fire uh, were then uh, paid for under the under these, you know, grant monies, uh, which will, you know, correct this issue. The other one uh, is a lot of these are, are over. Um, excuse me. Yeah, we have a surplus in, the, in a, basically in most of the other categories. This is just um, through the end of the year, but without having the year be wrapped up, um, audited, that sort of thing. We will still have other things like, you know, benefits uh, and that sort of thing that will get paid out. Uh, so that will take these down. Uh, so when, I don't know what the final number will be, but it will not be um, very different from budgeted. Uh, we I don't expect to have any, uh, you know, massive issues in here, uh, either surplus or deficit. Um, I, I should note the health department and emergency medical services are really the same category. We break them up for display purposes, but when you combine them, um, that looks a lot more like the rest of the categories uh, where we still have our, our sort of final, you know, uh, paperwork to do on them, uh, which will uh, pay out some more money and um, basically take us closer to budget. We have got... Uh, I'm sorry, can I ask one question about this? I, I guess, though, I'm a little confused because it seems like so many of the departments are operating at surplus. Um, I just want to make sure we're talking apples to apples when there is the ARP reconciliation because we know the money flew through the fire department. But I want to I just want to make sure that um, we're actually seeing what the surplus is with the ARP baked in, because if you look at all of this, um, th there, there are a number of areas that have surpluses and some of them are fairly high, um, you know, 20% or higher or close to, and just reconciling what's going on with that surplus money for these categories. Sure, this uh, actually, if, uh, if Norman uh, White is here, he may be able to uh, give more specific details. Yes. Um... Good afternoon. Um, I think that's where we're at. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, he's correct. Uh, what we see here is you're right. We did make the adjustments of taking some of fire department's general fund money and moving it around into the other category. So what you see in those surpluses will reduce, but it will be a surplus in that area, in those areas, but it won't be to the level we're talking about now. You also, if you recall, what we understood is that once the money comes in and we knew it would be some surpluses that it will move to fund balance to pay for year 24 and 25. So you're seeing the beginning of that process moving through the system now. Okay, thank you. Sure. Members, any questions? Anybody? Yeah, wh Are, where's, wh where's the fund balance represented here? Is it on this graphs anywhere? 
No, the, this is um, fund balance is represented in, in the financial statements. It would not be representing the budget to actual. And the reason being is because, as you know, um, January, February, and even some throughout the entire year to the financial statements are completed, we're still getting invoices and also payments. That will reduce it. And once it's finally baked, then we know what those overages truly are. This is just a snapshot in time. And basically this snapshot is much earlier than what we need for a fund balance calculation. Thank, thank you. I was thinking because I was in old meetings that that principle still applies. So it's good, good to see it. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Thank you. Uh, Council member Thomas, so I think you make a good point. Like one of the things we may want to start focusing on, whether it's in February or March, is what is the fund balance seeing it played out so we know as we prepare for the budget in May and June, and then also what cash flow looks like as well, because both of those things are important too. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you also, Mr. CFO. All right, Mr. McElroy, um, up, Council Member Morrell, see you coming off. Yeah, can I ask a quick question? Yes. As, as we determined last night, I see on here is a line item from the, from the JJIC. And as we discovered last night, there are approximately 52% of their positions at that institution are unfilled. And I think that it's important, Mr. Chairman, that we look through all these different agencies and we evaluate where the unfilled positions are, because as we look at the tremendous needs we have in the city for a variety of budget issues, departments should not be able to sit on unfilled positions, because as we're operating apparently right now at a 7% deficit, I think it's important to look through all these departments, look at unfilled positions so that the budget is balanced. Yep, and I've requested that we get that information for the next budget committee meeting. Because Thank I you. think, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think obviously some of these other departments, we wanna see what's going on. And then the other piece of it too in management, as well as is making sure FTEs are appropriately aligned with overtime as well. Anybody else? All right, Mr. McElroy, last slide, please. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry. There's a couple more. Okay. <laughs> uh, if we may uh, have the. Oh, and, and just to uh, reiterate uh, what what Norman said, we you know this is there was part of the the multi year plan where we knew the recurring revenue would be lower than trend for a few more years. Uh, so anytime we do have surpluses, uh, although they you know they may uh, not be anything on the order of twenty percent uh, at the end of the day, you know we we are uh, trying to stack these uh, you know to make them last because again that the revenue is. Uh, we do not do not expect the revenue to recover uh, to back to trend levels for a couple more years. Um, so on this, um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Can I have the next slide, please? Oh, and this is another. Uh, this is just a continuation of this, fairly similar, uh, with similar explanations for these things. So uh, here we have our citywide total uh, at the bottom, which again, uh, some of this will be uh, worked out. Okay, now uh, we can go to the next section, which will be the other operating expenses. Um, here, <clears throat> excuse me, we have, uh, as, as Norman mentioned, uh, the uh, we're still going to be receiving invoices for uh, at least through January, uh, you know, in a couple of uh, possible uh, months after that, uh, in some cases, to where uh, these will gradually be, you know, kind of whittled back down. Uh, we don't have, um, yeah, we, we have made uh, big improvements to the process, but there are still some uh, invoices that come in a little bit later. Um, so, you know, we're working on that, of course, and uh, that, that basically is the, uh, the only real note for this section, uh, this slide and the next slide. Unless there, of course, there are other questions. Um, if I can, Randall, um, Chair, I would like to mention something if you go back to the next slide for me you'll see a $5.5 million um, a negative number in the mayor's office. What that is, is the uh, cost that was went, went through Homeland Security during the IDA um, period. And so once that's JV'd over um, to get reimbursed to the federal um, um, grants, uh, we expect to receive 90% in some, but majority of those will be 100%. That'll balance out to zero once they make that adjustment and we'll get the reimbursement from the federal level. What you're seeing is the actual level going through Homeland Security um, um, as you're looking at it now. Question. Council Member Moreno. Thank you, Mr. White. Can you just refresh my memory on what IDA costs these were for? 
Well, it was it was everything. Uh, the response to it, it would be your police and fire response associated with it. It would be um, some of the uh, water costs. It would have fuel costs associated with it, sanitation. All those costs ran through um, the Homeland Security bucket, if you will. And, but there's a list that we can have. Go ahead. Funding on any of the uh, uh, mitigation for picking up um, trash? I believe some of the costs um, will be paid by the federal government. I don't know if the 5.4 is, is, um, is indicating that on this number, but it, was, it did go through in some cases Homeland Security, yes. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for bringing that up, Norman. Very important point, yes. All right. Um, I think uh, that is it for the slides. Mr. McElroy, thank you for uh, presenting those at the beginning. Uh, I know everybody likes to have questions about those and uh, just think it's worthwhile doing it at the beginning. So Absolutely. We, I agree. Uh, thank you. We look forward to working with you. Right, thank um, you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, Mr. Montano, is Ms. Trapagna going to present on the two motions with regard to the classified play plan? Um, it's my understanding Yes, that would be uh, civil service or her representative. I believe we have Mr. Hagman on the phone. Okay, Mr. Hagman, how are you? Hey, good afternoon to y'all. Good afternoon, sir. Why don't we take up number four, the motion um, regarding the fire department and 911 liaison officer and supervisor. Those are a, these are a motion that would be for hiring rates as you know, a number of years ago, um, the fire dispatching function, it was outsourced from the fire department to the Orleans Parish Communication District, but there was still like a need for oversight from the fire department to deal with the day-to-day -day logistics related to the communications area. Uh, as a result of that need, uh, the commission and the council approved two new classifications of 911 liaison officer and 911 liaison supervisor. These classes are essentially tied to the fire captain and fire district chief classifications uh, because of the degree of oversight that these positions provide. Um, as you know, as of January 1st, there were a 15% hiring rate adjustment for fire suppression classifications. And so these hiring rates essentially uh, restore the parity that existed for these classifications in the class of fire captain and fire district chief. Uh, it's based, it's based, these, this is basically an equity adjustment which is provided for in civil service rules and we'll be happy to answer any questions the uh, council may have. Thank you, Mr. Hagman. Are there any questions from any members? All right, uh, see, seeing none, I will entertain the motion to approve. So moved. So moved by council president, I have a second. Second, second, second Green. Second. All right, second by council member Green. Anybody who's opposed, let us know. Five yeas, no nays uh, on motion number four. All right, Mr. Hagman, lead us through number, item number five, please. Um, this is an item for a amendment to the special rates of pay that are provided for in a pay plan. This particular special rate of pay is for police in that it's to extend the benefit of a special rate of pay for those officers who are actually in a class of police officer. Uh, formerly, you basically needed to be in a job classification of senior police officer or higher. But because of sometimes budget issues that are related to, I guess, in effect, the day-to-day -day affairs of the budget, regular promotion sometimes just couldn't occur. Uh, so basically, if you couldn't get in the class of senior police officer, you would not be eligible. Uh, so this amendment, in effect, provides for those rare times, in effect, where uh, regular promotions aren't uh, affordable by the city, and it would, but it would allow, in effect, the regular police officer who has had the training, uh, which is basically their specific detective training that's involved, and they would meet the actual experience requirement to be a senior police officer. So basically, in effect, this affords 
in those rare instances, the opportunity for a police officer not to be penalized and to take uh, a benefit of, uh, of, of the special rate of pay when so assigned as a detective in either a district or one of the specialized detective units at the police department. And once again, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Councilmember Morrell. Uh, yes. Um, can y'all hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Um, I guess my question is, is that, and I read this, this item. So essentially what this does is it allows for the police department to do soft promotions. Uh, I'm, I, that's sort of a, it's, it, it's sort of to like, a, it's an intermediary step. If this is a detective assignment, it's, it's a special rate of pay, which means people can be moved in and out uh, because of the special nature of the assignment of being a detective. Okay. So well, this is in no it's not, it, this is in no way meant to be circumvent promotions. This is, this is basically an opportunity to provide that benefit when from some budget issue, in effect, regular promotions aren't, aren't, aren't allowable. Okay, and I guess my question would be, this is my only hesitancy, this, that special rate of pay that's being allocated to this person for that role, that is absorbed within the department's existing budget, correct? That would be correct. Okay, and we're not creating a scenario where, and I'm not saying that this is, in imminent, but I don't want to create a scenario in which we allow this to occur and it's not captured inside of the existing budget. Because obviously we don't want to have any department exceed their their authority, their budgetary authority from, the, from that, that calendar year. I guess from, I guess the answer to your question is the department has to basically put two, it has to budget for two things in this. They would have to budget for the senior police officer promotion, and they would have to budget for the police detective assignment. They may have money for one, but not for the other. If 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 perhaps they didn't have the if they didn't have the money in the budget, in effect, it just it probably wouldn't be approved by the chief administrative office. So, but but which, so, I guess, like I said, my only hesitation and this could probably be resolved at a later date, is that I don't want there to be a position where any department exceeds their budgetary authority and we don't have built-in requirements that should something get to that point, either it's directly prohibited or they have to, have to come back to this committee to get, or to the chairman to get that, to, to, to allow themselves to do that. So I, I don't think this is a today problem because as my, as my good friend, Councilmember Thomas constantly says, we have a police department that has more money and less officers. I don't think it's a problem for today, but it could be a problem for the future. And obviously I just wanna make sure in this process, we don't create future problems. Councilmember Morrell, I think I think it's a very good point. I mean, just two things that I would note. One is the budget for NOPD is built out between 13 and 1400 officers. And we're at 1,085 as well as if you look at the thing you were asking about earlier, according to uh, the personnel service chart, that they had $17 million in their surplus. So um, if we're using history as a guide, then I, I, I think we should be covered, but I think you're making a very good point about about not putting the cart before the horse. Well, I, I think, I, I, and I'll just simply add, that that point. if they're operating with a $17 million surplus, that makes a lot of the comments that were made previously pretty asinine about how they can't, we can't afford to have them work cooperatively and pay for more positions if they're sitting on a $17 million surplus. But that's a question for a different committee, Mr. Chairman. So I will, I've, I've made my point. Uh, I think we're good for right now, but I reserve the right in the future, Robert, to revisit this if it becomes an issue down the line. Thank you. Chairman Council Member, I'm sorry, Mr. Montagna. Um, Chairman DeRusso, um, uh, Council Member Morell, just let me repunctuate. Um, no agency can spend uh, um, what they what they're not appropriated. So, if the police department was to not have this funding, which obviously they did, would built it into both the mid year and the uh, the final year budget, they can't exceed their appropriation. So, any money above whatever they were requesting, if they outspend, would have to come in the form of a supplemental to this body. 
So they can't out. I think your question was, can they, and forgive me if I'm misarticulating it, um, can an agency spend more than they have been approved through the budget process? The answer is no, without a supplemental um, ordinance that, and, and budget and expenditure ordinance that would have been approved by this council as we did through the mid-year typically budget process or supplemental budget process. I appreciate that, that, cl that uh, clarification and that makes me somewhat more comfortable. I do think that many of us share some concerns generally speaking, that when a budget, when surpluses exist in a budget and the monies that within those surpluses are itemized for a specific purpose, and in this case, it's for positions that don't exist, that there seems to be across the board a lot of misperception that that allows for departmental flexibility to spend that surplus money how they see fit. And I think that in this instance, like I said, I don't really have a problem, but I do think that there's going to have to be in the near future a point of clarification that if we budget money for a certain purpose and it's necessary during the course of the year, not exceeding their budget, that any department wants to spend it on a different purpose. For example, last night, JJI, JJIC very candidly said they can't fill their positions, but they're using their position money to pay overtime which I know for a lot of us kind of raised our eyebrows because those two things are not the same thing, that there has to be an accountability system where we know how money is being budgeted. And if it is going to be spent in a different way, we're not inherently opposed to it, but in most legislative bodies that have the control of the budget, you have to return to the body to get an amendment or some kind of approval done to spend money within your budget on something that is not itemized in the budget. I think that's a general problem. Like I said, I have no problem with this particular item today, but I do think that there's gonna have to be, in order for us to have discipline and budgeting, there's gonna have to be a point of clarification that if we budget for positions, that's not just flexible money you can spend on anything. You have to really spend it on what it was allotted for. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Member Morrell. Anybody else? Well, with that lively discussion, I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Green. Okay, uh, moved by Councilmember Green, seconded by Councilmember Thomas. Anybody opposed? Speak now. All right, uh, let the record reflect that's five yeas in favor. Um, we are going to defer item number six and then. This Mr. CAO, with regards to number seven, um, we did not finish the meeting last night. Uh, and so my thought is since we have the sheriff and Pano at a minimum, that we, we also park this item, unless any member has a specific question they wanna ask. My thought was it'd be better to have all of the criminal justice uh, stakeholders in front of us, make sure that we have all the information rather than doing this piecemeal. But if somebody has a burning question on item number seven, I'm happy to entertain that. All right, seeing none, um, Mr. Swenzik, uh, do we need to formally move to go into executive session now on item number eight? We do. Um, I'll entertain the motion to move into executive session on the items listed on the agenda. <coughs> Moved by Councilmember Moreno. I'm going to take Councilmember Green as the second there. And anybody opposed? That's five yeas, um, none opposed, and we will move into executive session before coming back to our last item, which is adjourned. Thank you, members. And members of the city attorney has sent around a dial in uh, a call in number for the executive session.
All right, council members, uh, we are coming out of executive session. Uh, council member Green, can I ask you to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. So moved, second by council member Thomas. You go with that, sir? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the technology today. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll second it. There you go. You're good. All right. Yeah, I got it. All right. We got you, council members. All right. So uh, anybody who objects to adjournment, speak up now or council member Thomas, shake your head widely. <laughs> All right. We're four, four zero. We stand adjourned today.